Hey, Internet. So today I want to pontificate with you about the future of software development teams. In the future, we're likely going to have thousands of Codex agents from OpenAI running in the background. Now, these Codex agents aren't like any other AI coding assistant. But instead, it's a swarm of agents all running in the background in parallel with little oversight. Right now, everybody that's talking about Codex agents from OpenAI, they tend to be talking about features. But what I want to talk about is the future of software development and what that looks like for teams at both enterprises and small companies. So with that being said, let's dive in. If you're not aware, OpenAI released a coding model, specifically Codex 1, a few days ago. And this model is a derivation or a distillation of O3, where you send it one prompt, and then it goes off and does that specific task for you, either fixing a bug or something else. But this video is not about the features. It's actually about the future. So with that being said, let's get into the actual specifics around the future. OK, so this is a chart that's showing increased agency. And that's really the key thing with Codex. So here we have all the different types of tools uh, shown in this chart here. So we have on one axis, agency autonomy. On the other axis, we have required human oversight. And they're kind of similar, right? So if there's a lot of oversight, you're on this side. If there's a little oversight on this side, if there's a lot of agency on this side, a little agency on this side. And we can see there's tons of different tools here that everybody likes to use. So we have cursor, windsurf, zero, uh, v0, lovable, etc. And all of these AI assisted coding agents, they all tend to have a lot of oversight oversight and they also tend to have multi-turn approach and we'll talk about this more in a second so we'll just say multi and then we have codex and devon over here so codex and devon both are agents in a sense that there's minimal oversight a lot of agency so i give you a job you go off and do it and i actually don't necessarily watch you i go off and do my other thing while you're working on the side so you're a true co-assisting engineer now there's a difference between these two. The main difference is Devon is a single run. So we're gonna ask Devon to do one task and it goes and does that. With Codex on the other hand, we're actually going to have multiple agents running in parallel, working on multiple tasks instead of one. And we can see that better on this chart down here. If I can pull that down. And this chart is both talking about that and also the other thing which is a one-shot versus multi-shot turn. And that was the point I made previously. And what I mean by multi-shot turn, if we look at all the items below in that bottom left-hand corner, it's multi-shot in the sense that if I ask it to do one thing, it's likely not going to achieve it in the first shot. I'm going to have to go back and forth with AI. So oftentimes when you work with cursor, windsurf, etc., you ask it to do something and you may have 20 to 30 prompts back and forth in the conversation for it to achieve that task. But with Codex, OpenAI, what they're hoping to do is they're giving you a high quality model that's derived from O3, which is Codex 1. And in that, they're hoping that with that reinforcement learned model, that when you send the information in with one prompt, it's going to achieve that task in one prompt. And if it doesn't achieve it in its first iteration, it'll iterate by itself without your assistance and figure out the solution itself without you intervening at all. And that's key and that's really important. And that's one of the big things that OpenAI is doing different from all the other AI centric IDEs. And that's their future vision of what AI engineering will look like, and especially um, for larger organizations that have multiple teams, multiple tasks, and multiple code bases. So that's one item I wanted to show you for that chart. Um, some other things I wanted to call it here is what's missing, and likely what will be added back in for this tool for Codex. So right now what's missing is your ability to do uh, mid-task steering. What that means is that as the AI is doing its coding, you actually can't observe it. There's no live preview. And that's another thing. These are kind of connected where you can't watch the AI do what it's doing. And if you can't watch it, you can't actually steer it mid task because it might be going in the wrong direction. You might want to say, hey, stop, don't do that. Go this way. And that's what a lot of people do today to steer the AI with cursor to mitigate um, too many bugs, too many um, spiral error cases and things like that. But that's not the case here. So you have to kind of just hope that the AI does what it should. And they will add mid task steering in the future and they will probably add live pre pre preview as well. But the important thing is, is these, at least in opening eyes, vision likely from what I've read and what I've seen, these are uh, fallbacks and these shouldn't necessarily be always the issue that people focus on. Because we are hoping, opening eye and others, we're going to build AI models that don't necessarily need these features. They're smart enough to achieve the task without any additional steering and or live oversight from the engineer itself. 
And then the last thing they'll likely add is multimodal, because right now they're only taking in text, not images and things like that. So those are some things that will be added on likely in the future. And then the last thing here I want to call out is that with Codex from OpenAI, it's enterprise focused. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we have two circles here, all the tools that you and I use today are mostly focused on solopreneurs or solo devs inside of larger teams. So V0, Replit Agent Lovable, Bolt.new, Claude, Code, um, Devin, and Cursor, they're all focused on an individual doing a task with an AI, really strong pair programming. And Cursor and Devin are both starting to get closer to the enterprise world based off of how people are utilizing these tools and how they fit into the enterprise workflow, but they're not necessarily focusing heavily on that for the features they've delivered. Windsurf, on the other hand, started out in corporate development land, so they're working with larger teams inside of enterprises trying to um, focus on larger code bases and uh, focusing on fixing issues for those. Windsurf is focused on corporate development, but they're mainly utilized by solopreneurs and solo devs. And then lastly, we have Codex from OpenAI. And you can see the types of tasks they're trying to accomplish with this tool are fixing small bugs, refactoring code, uh, editing uh, minor features, doing different types of uh, PR commits that are associated to those items that I mentioned. So the smaller things you are associated to tech debt. And the way I can kind of talk about this is with tech debt, with any organization, there's a lot of different tasks that people don't want to work on. So that's going to be fixing bugs. That's going to be refactoring code to make it run more efficient or kind of fit in with future features and a variety of other items associated to tech debt. And with this, if you, look, if you worked at any organization, over 200 people, you'll know that oftentimes with those organizations is there's pro product managers, so we'll do PMs here, and then we have engineering managers on this side. And there tends to be a tug and pull between the two, where oftentimes PMs and also the rest of the organization, they want the engineering team to focus on features that are going to move the revenue needle. So you need to be building features that are going to either help us get more customers or get our existing customers to pay us more. So those are the features that engineers should be focusing on. But oftentimes, the engineering team, what they want to do is they want to focus on both that, of course, they want to focus on those features, but also they want to focus on tech debt. They want to work on the ability to make their code base more robust, more clean. They want to get rid of bugs, etc. But all of those fixes are, they're invisible. They're invisible because they're often in the background. Customers can't really necessarily admire or be grateful for those, those fixes to the tech debt. So oftentimes in these debates between, uh, between um, product managers and engineers, product managers often win because they're focused on revenue and profit and getting more customers or more out of existing customers. But with Codex and with OpenAI, now what they can do is instead of having your engineers focus on that, you can take these new Codex agents and you can have them do all the tech debt work. So these agents will focus on the tech debt that's not pushing profit forward. And then the human engineers will focus on the features that either get more customers or get more out of existing customers. So, Internet. With that being said, that is what I wanted to talk to you about today. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please reshare it with your friends. And if you'd like to work with me, I have a company called Gradient Labs. Where we help organizations implement AI internally to increase productivity, save time, money, and even sometimes generate revenue. So if that's interesting, below is a link where you can book a free discovery call for 30 minutes to see if there's a good fit between you and I. And with that being said, Internet, I'll see you next time.